All right, believe it or not, this is the last video lecture that you have to listen to, so hopefully you're not too sad by that. Um, the last concept in electrochemistry that I want to briefly just talk to you guys about so that you've covered the full set of material, especially any of you going into college chemistry, you've had application to all the different t concepts in your first year chemistry course. That's the major, main purpose for me to do this, along with providing a little bit of extra additional instruction as administration wants us to all the way through this week. So um, after listening to this, um, there'll be a short couple problems to do. Um, I'll just post those online that you can just check your work over with. And then on uh, Friday, I'll probably already on Thursday have available a quiz that's probably going to be around 10 to 15 questions. Um, it'll either be got some matching or multiple choice or all multiple choice. I haven't, I haven't made it yet, but that'll be on Canvas and that will wrap up the year. Um, that'll conclude the material for the course and also all your requirements for the course as well. Um, for any of you that um, have borrowed any of my textbooks, the following week, next week, in the first week of June, uh, when you are coming in to drop off your materials, um, make sure if you do have any of the textbooks or solutions manuals that you grab from me, please bring those back into one of those drop-off times and um, make sure you just put a little net tab on there that's for Mr. K to take. Um, Otherwise, I appreciate all of your efforts in this course. It, uh, I have been very impressed by many of you and what you've done throughout these last few months. And uh, just keep it going um, for the rest of the juniors and sophomores. Um, and let me know if there's anything else I can do for you in the future. Okay? All right, so what's an electrolytic cell? Now, first of all, you'll notice up here, the first word you see in some of the definitions is galvanic, which can be used on the national exam, but since you're not going to have to worry about that, no big deal. The word that I use is voltaic. A voltaic cell is a spontaneous cell, and it's spontaneous because it has a cell potential. When you add up the anode and cathode, you get a cell voltage which is positive, which also causes the free energy value to be negative. When you have a negative G value or a positive voltage of a cell, that is a spontaneous cell, which means you simply hook it up and immediately it starts reacting because it... Um, it is spontaneous. It, it drives to forming products. All right. Electrolytic cell is exactly the opposite of that. An electrolytic cell, the cell voltage is less than zero, or therefore it is a negative value. And therefore, it is not a spontaneous cell. And therefore, it's going to give a G value, which is positive, which means you would hook it up, nothing would happen. The reaction does not naturally form products. So when you see an electrolytic cell, one of the first things they might give you is the fact that the voltage of the cell is negative. Or in your picture, which you still have an anode and cathode, just like you would for an electrolytic cell, almost everything is identical. The difference is instead of being a voltmeter, what you're going to see is a battery. We need something to cause the chemical energy to cause this reaction to take place. We need something to drive it. Since it's not spontaneous, it won't go on its own. We have to provide the additional energy, or in this case, an energy source like a battery to cause this reaction to occur. Okay, so the difference in electrolytic cells is you will see a battery or a power source in the picture versus a voltmeter, which means then the reaction um, that's where the energy is coming from to supply the reaction. A great application of this is electroplating, where we have metals that are in the solution as anion, cations. And what we will cause those cations to do is um, specifically in the cathode, the cations that are present in that solution will adhere because they're going to gain electrons at the cathode and it's going to plate. So the metal will be plated, a metal will be plated on the surface of the material, and they do this often. They'll plate lots of different things, and the purpose of plating is to resist corrosion or oxidation, rusting. And so they'll plate the surface with a metal that is more durable than what it is made of, and that thin coating will cause the, um, the product to have a much longer lasting life. Okay, so that's a practical application of this. Okay. Um, current, still an electrolytic cell, still flows from the anode to the cathode. So nothing really changes. The only difference is the cell potential is zero. Okay? Now, this leads us to the very last equation. On your green sheet, there's an equation 
which is the last equation for me to cover throughout this year, which is I over Q over T. The I stands for, stands for current, which is usually in amperes, amps, okay? The little Q in this case is coulombs, which is charge, and the charge we measure in coulombs, and T, little t, as normal as time, and that's going to be in seconds. It must be in seconds. So if we divide the charge by the time, charge over time is amperes. So if, if any of you have had some electricity mechanism in physics classes with Mr. Bauer, this is something that might be a review for you. Okay. As you can see here, a coulomb is an amp times a second because if we solve for Q, Q equals I times T, which is an amp times a second, which is a coulomb. There are some, also some other variables here and uh, units to consider when we look at this. You'll notice one mole of electrons. So a mole of electrons would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd electrons. So one Avogadro's numbers of electrons is equal to 96,485 coulombs, which is also called a Faraday. Okay, Faraday's constant from the, from the previous lectures. A kilowatt hour. You on your electric bill is charged per kilowatt hour of electricity usage. A kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 million joules of energy, or 3,600 kilojoules of energy. That is equivalent to a kilowatt hour. So if you look at your electric bill, you'll notice a certain charge per kilowatt hour. That's um, what it comes from your energy, your current energy usage. And then there's some other couple uh, units down here that we'll take a look at. For the most part, electrolytic cells is nothing more than looking at, <coughs> excuse me, is looking at doing a very large stoichiometry problem along with utilizing the current equation. Okay, so let's look at our first example. Calculate the number of grams of aluminum produced in one hour by electrolysis of molten aluminum chloride if the electrical current is 10 amps. So we're, we're creating number of grams of aluminum from aluminum chloride. Now aluminum chloride in the molten state is going to have aluminum ions floating around and chloride ions. So what we're going to be doing here is by adding current is we're going to cause the aluminum that's in the liquid state by it gaining three moles of electrons it will become solid aluminum metal. We'll be able to plate out the aluminum from the aluminum chloride at one of the electrodes. Okay, and that is given by that half reaction. All right, so we have been given one hour. So one hour is a time quantity. And we have also been given our amperage or our current, our I is 10 amps. Okay, now as I said before in this equation, so we haven't been given the equation is Q. So that's what we're obviously going to be solved for. But you have to be careful with the, in order to get Q, amps or coulomb seconds, we must convert the hours into seconds. So how many seconds are there in an hour? Hopefully you said 3,600. That is the most common thing that students do wrong in these problems. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour, okay? So to solve that equation for Q, Q equals I times T. So if I go ahead and do that, 10 amps times 3,600 seconds equals 36,000 coulombs. All right, so that's the charge. So now where do we go from here? So now we know the total amount of charge that must occur for that amount, for this amount of aluminum to be plated out of the solution, okay? Well, if I look up above, as I said before, once you use the equation, it becomes a stoichiometry problem. Well, up here, what do I notice right off the bat? Right here. One mole of electrons equals 96,485 coulombs. So I can use 96,485 coulombs. I'm able to utilize coulombs to convert the charge into the moles of electrons. And some of you might already be seeing where I'm going to go with this. Once I've converted the coulombs into electrons, I can then utilize my half reaction to notice that for three moles of electrons, right there, three moles of electrons, for three moles of electrons, I am going to 
plate out one mole of aluminum. And I don't want moles of aluminum, I want grams. So the last thing is to convert moles to grams, which I know all of you now can do very easily. The molar mass is 26.98 grams per aluminum, mole of aluminum. And now this is how I'm able to effectively convert coulombs into grams. And this will determine how much metal will be plated out of a solution, okay? Uh, which we also can utilize also even in a voltaic cell for the uh, electrode that gains mass, the cathode, how much will be plated at a specific amount of time. Okay, so going through and plugging that in and solving. You get 3.36 grams of aluminum metal will be plated out Okay, in that one hour of electroplating. Okay, so again, once after you use the equation, if you have coulombs, you can convert coulombs into moles of electrons, into moles of metal, okay, and then into grams of metal. And vice versa, you could have a problem where they say after a certain amount of time, X amount of metal, grams of metal, was plated out. Also know how to do this backwards. Take the grams into moles. Take the moles into moles of electrons. Take the moles of electrons into coulombs. So make sure you can do these problems in both directions. Okay? To go from coulombs to moles of electrons, in this step we are going to use the coulombs per mole of electrons. Moles of electrons to moles of metal, that's going to be the mole ratio. And that's going to come from the half reaction. Okay, how many electrons does that metal require to have its oxidation state go from its positive state to its neutral state and get its neutral metal? And then we need to know the molar mass of the metal to plate it out. So it's simply a conversion problem, just like a mass to mass problem. In this case, it's a coulombs to mass or a mass to coulombs problem. All right. Uh, the next problem, calculate the number of kilowatt hours of electricity required to produce a thousand kilograms of aluminum if the voltage is 4.5 volts. Okay, I've kind of put some information down here, so I'm gonna turn over to a blank page and work with this problem. So the previous page, if you know the mass of the metal, sometimes I just go backwards. So this problem literally is just having us go backwards. This page, what else information do I have here at my disposal? Um, it says right here that one joule is equal to a coulomb times a volt. As long as you understand this conversion factor of coulombs to grams of metal and vice versa, you should have no problem in these problems at all. Okay? All right. For homework for Thursday. Now, to, technically, this lecture is supposed to be viewed for uh, Wednesday. Thursday, you're supposed to do the homework problems. So the homework problems is the next page of the packet, and I also will post this on Canvas. What have they given us? Again, they've given us a thousand kilograms of aluminum, and they've told me that the voltage used is going to be 4.5 volts. All right, so the first thing I notice is I've been given the mass of the aluminum and I said, so now the first thing is you'll notice that it, the first thing hopefully you notice is that it's in kilograms. So we gotta first convert that into grams. All right, so 1,000 kilograms. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Of aluminum. Next step, once I know the mass of the metal in grams, I can use its molar mass. To convert it into its moles of aluminum. Whenever I know the moles of the metal, I can then go ahead and convert the moles of the metal in these problems into the moles of electrons. And again, aluminum forms plus three charge. So we need three moles of electrons per mole of metal. So again, we're just doing this problem backwards, okay? 
you must identify the metal as to how many moles of electrons. So what if it's what is its most common oxidation state? What is the charge on the metal? If the metal has a charge of plus two, well then the moles of electrons would be two. If it's plus four, then it would be four. Okay. And then lastly, each mole of electrons will require ninety six thousand four hundred eighty five. Coulombs. So a thousand kilograms of aluminum will require a very large number, 1.07 times 10 to the 10th coulombs. Okay. Now in this problem, they're not worried about time or ampered, so we don't have to really worry. Typically in a problem like this, again, the coulombs would tell me the Q value. Either they would give me the current, the number of amps used, or they'd give me the time, and I'd be asked them to convert into either how long did this take me, or how much amperage was, appear, was applied to cause this amount of aluminum to um, played out. But in this problem, they've done it a different way. We're looking at the number of um, kilowatt hours. So if I go back to the pre... All right, so a joule is equal to a coulomb times a volt. Well, you'll notice... They told me my voltage, and now I know my coulombs, so the units tell me what I should do with those two numbers. I should multiply them. So if I take my number of coulombs times the voltage, that will give me the number of joules of energy that was required to plate out this much aluminum. And once I know the number of joules, I can use the conversion factor that there are 3.6 million joules in a kilowatt hour. So in this problem, instead of doing the plastic plug and chug into the equation, here we're looking at number of kilowatt hours. Okay? And then uh, dividing that out, I end up we end up getting a value of 1.34 times 10 to the fourth kilowatt hours. Now, if this was a plant producing aluminum metal, okay, saw aluminum metal to then be sold, they're going to be charged for the electricity usage. So I looked up Wisconsin. Wisconsin charges 14 cents. Per kilowatt hour. So if I multiply this number of kilowatt hours by 14 cents per kilowatt hour, that equates to 1880 dollars. Now I might say, well, that's not very much when it comes to a company. This is just the electricity cost. This has nothing to do with the materials. This has nothing to do with um, the chemicals, the compounds, the transportation costs, the facility, the workers you're paying, the raw product shipment, all that stuff. This is just solely the cost of electricity. And this is why aluminum metal is typically a metal that is recycled because it's cheaper to recycle it than it is to mine it out of the ground, to melt it down, to isolate the aluminum, and to just purify the aluminum. It's much more convenient to clean, to repurpose, and to reuse, and to recycle aluminum metal. And that's why aluminum is one of the metals that is more likely re uh, recycled than some other metals. Okay, it's due to its cost. All right, so here's an example of going the other direction. So be able to do these problems both forwards and backwards, but pretty much they're the same. Well, so I'd like you to do these three problems, and you can always look back at my lecture here to look at them. But these are looking at very similar problems, but now instead of um, aluminum, we're looking at both copper and silver. All right, and the third one is a conceptual question that I'll see if you can identify an answer. But I'll post these answers onto Canvas, all right? And then you can simply um, watch 
Um, I'm going to look up those answers. And then if you have any questions, I will be available on Thursday at 3 p.m. All right. Um, on our normal Microsoft Teams chat line, if you have any questions or you just want to say hi uh, or say goodbye, I guess, um, to have your enjoyable summer. But again, I do appreciate those of you that have made it through all the way to the end. And um, I really thank all of your time and efforts towards it. Um, Friday, probably already either tomorrow sometime or Thursday, I'll make available the quiz. Once you've gone through the three major lectures, the two last week and this one this week, um, the Nernst equation will not be on the quiz. Uh, the quiz will be like 10 to 15 questions. And once you've taken that quiz, that'll be your sole responsibility for this week. And that'll also be the sole responsibility for the year. You have concluded this class. Okay. So again, thank you. Um, if there's anything else I can help you with now or throughout the summer, just shoot me an email. And I'll be glad to help help you out with anything um, that, that may be. Um, typically, um, juniors, those of you becoming seniors next year, usually early on you start getting into the process of looking at um, colleges. Um, so um, if you are interested or need someone to write a letter of recommendation and you think you've done a very good job and you've worked hard in this class um, and you would like a letter of recommendation and you'd like me to write one in, on your behalf, um, please reach out to me sometime this summer. I would really appreciate doing most of my um, letters of recommendation over summer when I have more time. Um, especially, it's tough to say what will happen next year with the school year. But if you are thinking that you're going to want a letter of recommendation from me, the sooner you let me know, the better. Um, and then I will get in contact with me through email. And um, we'll touch base and I'll tell you what I need from you. And um, over the summer, I will write you a letter of recommendation. Um, for you for um, college purposes. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great day. And again, I'll be available on Thursday. Otherwise, if there's anything else you need, just shoot me an email. Okay. Thanks a lot.